Oh man, I was so wrong about E3. Hello, welcome to Game Rating Room Vlog. My name is Jean-Marc Lejean, and today I'll be talking about how super wrong I was about E3 and if the hype was real. So, my E3 predictions. I had so much hope back then. Anyway, it was fun to kind of see what E3 may or may not have been and have a lot of conjecture, but my conjecture was all wrong. I thought there'd be a new Spyro game. Nope. I thought there'd be a new Infamous game. No. And I was really hoping there'd be a new Fable game. No. I thought that the Xbox Scorpio was going to end up being the next system in, you know, the next premium system outside of the Xbox One brand and be its own proprietary system. I was incredibly wrong because all the Xbox X as it's called and that's what the Scorpio's real name is, Xbox X is, is just a PlayStation Pro Plus. Uh, just it's, it's faster than the PlayStation Pro but all it is is a PlayStation Pro for Xbox that's it then the one thing i was like sure of i was like 100 percent 1000 percent sure that this was going to happen i was like super super sure that smash brothers was going to be at e3 being shown by nintendo absolutely nothing not a word not a peep Nothing about old Smash Brothers. I was super wrong about that. Oh, man. It was terrible. And E3 this year, I remember while it was happening, I was like, this is lackluster. And I even went on a few websites and was like, does anyone else agree that this was a lackluster year? But the more I thought about it, 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 was, it had its moments. Now, it wasn't like nonstop. Every conference was great. Of course, I gush about Ubisoft. And Nintendo's was a lot better than I gave it credit for. I thought I was a bigger Samus fan than I thought. It kind of got ruined that there'd be a Samus game. Like a little bit before I watched it. So it might have taken the steam away of my reaction. But, I mean, are people really excited about Mario plus Rabbids? I mean, the director's great. And the game looks good, but it's not my cup of tea. So... Maybe it'll sell well. Maybe it'll do good, despite it being, a, you know, the type of game that it is. I'm still excited about certain things like Beyond Good and Evil. And Anthem looks awesome. Enough to keep me going through the year being excited about these things. I don't know. I'm glad they didn't really focus on things that are extremely far in the future, like Death Stranding, Final Fantasy VII. Kingdom Hearts 3, yeah, Kingdom, yeah, it's just like, they did drop a trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3, when, but didn't attach it to any conferences, which I thought was weird, and sometimes Square saw, or Square Enix now, sorry, they have their own press conference, and I guess they decided not to have one this year, because everything they're putting out is like, years away, and I guess... I don't know. I just found it weird that the trailer they dropped right at E3 wasn't any conference. Like, zero conferences. Maybe they're trying to build hype for something that all the other consoles know aren't coming out, and they want something more tangible than just a trailer. But then I'm talking about PlayStation here, who, you know, they're mostly trailers at these conferences anyway now, and some controlled gameplay demos, which is fine. It stops from the hiccups of, you know, there being lag issues while you're trying to play games at a main stage on a main event that is going live in front of millions of people and if you mess up like you're gonna be embarrassed i was just really tired for e3 i'd work a lot i'm working full time now just not getting sleep and i was filming and editing and then wondering when i was gonna upload and staying up late editing and it was awesome it was an awesome workflow situation of like okay i gotta get these out and I gotta get these edited, and it was real tough, but I enjoyed it. It wasn't like it was a whole lot of videos, but it was, it was a good bit. Um, but e it was fun to watch every single video, give information about them, and my opinion on most of the things. 
Xbox was so dense. It was so dense. I barely remember a lot of it. I kind of remember Sea of Thieves because that's being mixed right now. Some people were excited. Some people aren't. It's a very mixed reaction to that. What else was it, Xbox? I don't remember. Um, there was other stuff, but I can't really recall. So there's so many games. It was like a Star Wars prequel where they tried to put as much computer animation into a shot. And the shot didn't make sense because there's so many things going on in the background, you know, wanting your attention. And it, that's kind of what it was like in Xbox and Z3. There's so many things. When well, their main focus should have been Xbox X. Oh, that's the thing that happened. The Xbox X. This is the thing. Focus on this and the games that will be running on that. PlayStation has a PlayStation VR stuff. I am more surprised than probably Greg Miller. I, I can't believe it. They actually showed PlayStation VR stuff. I, I mean, yes, it wasn't a lot, but they didn't need a lot. They just needed to give a little bit more love than they gave the Vita, and they did. Like, hey, here's some games. They're all coming out relatively soon. They all look fun, and I, I don't know. I'm kind of torn, but we'll get to that in the next video. So, was the E3 hype real? A week later, it's diminished by about 50% for me. So, right when it happened, those first few days, I was really hyper thinking about everything. What does it all mean? And now I'm just like, okay, they're just video games that are going to come out. And then we're either going to buy them or not buy them. <laughs> it's a fun experience getting wrapped into the hype and wondering what's going on. So... I don't know, maybe it says something about the E3 that my hype isn't lasting longer. Because some E3s, like when they announced Final Fantasy VII, and that year was awesome. I could not stop thinking about what Final Fantasy VII Remake was going to be. And I was just I was just so excited. And this year it's like, Beyond Good and Evil 2. I mean, I don't have a huge attachment to that game. But I am so glad after all this time, they're actually making that game. I'm very happy for them. Everyone's saying a lot. Oh, not everyone. A lot of people are saying that Nintendo won this conference, and I couldn't disagree more with everyone. I mean, yeah, they had some things, but they really didn't show you anything, right? They didn't show me a Metroid trailer. They just showed me a Metroid sign. They didn't show me a Pokemon game that someone talking about a Pokemon game. The only game they showed was for 3DS, and I don't own a 3DS. Does that make me not a true Nintendo fan? Because they don't own their handhelds, and I'm not really into handhelds, and I only really play my Vita. But even then, it's, you know, I wish I played my Vita more. Ubisoft did good. EA, uh, Bethesda, uh, I was expecting way more out of them. It was lighthearted, but uh, so many missteps. Uh, Xbox, PlayStation did pretty good. Um, they were up there. Nintendo would have struck just one more chord in me. They would have won this E3. It would have been great. So E3 was great. I'm glad it exists, and I'm glad we're all able to go there and experience it together and elevate games to the way that it should be. Thank you for watching Game Rating Review. My name is Mark J. Please hit that like, subscribe button, you like what you see. And remember that that was just my opinion of E3 2017 and the lack of hype. Do 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 do